Excellency Dr. Mohamed Ifran Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Ghana, Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, Minister of Agriculture, Ghana, and Chair of the Special Ministerial Task Force on Food Production and Food Security, Honorable Samantha Marshall, Minister of Agriculture, Antigua and Barbuda, and Chairperson, uh, the Honorable Floyd Green, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries for Jamaica, Honorable Michael Pintard, Minister of Agriculture for the Bahamas, others the distinguished ministers of government, Mr. Didier Trebo, United Nations Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean States, His Excellency Dr. Manuel Otero, Director General of AICA, Dr. Renata Clark, Sub-Regional Coordinator, Caribbean for FAO, Mr. Regis Chapman, Caribbean Head, World Food Program. Other specially invited guests with specific mention of our farming groups, NGOs, the private sector and civil society, my colleagues at the CARICOM Secretariat, distinguished ladies and gentlemen all, good morning. Today's virtual gathering is extremely timely and necessary as the region continues to grapple with the impacts of COVID-19 and the consequent damage to our regional economies. Therefore, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome each of you to this regional dialogue as we prepare for the United Nations Food Systems Summit. Globally, one in nine people go hungry, go to bed hungry, and approximately one third of the food produced is lost or wasted. Ironically, across the region, our farmers are usually listed among the poorest and the most vulnerable. A cursory look at the data revealed that the region's imports uh, imports approximately five billion U.S. dollars in food annually, and if on, and if left unabated, this is likely to climb to some six billion U.S. dollars in a in a few short years. Recognizing this trajectory, heads of government made a clarion call for deliberate actions to be undertaken using a whole of of society approach setting as a target the reduction in our food bill, our food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. Nevertheless, we have to acknowledge and find solutions for the market dysfunction that has marred the region's food production over the years. At one level, farm gate prices are depressed, but retail prices to the consumer are high and climbing. At another level, our food producers are not competing on a level playing field, but one where subsidies and other incentives are creating market distortions, including creating an environment for dumping. This, of course, is a scenario where food is being priced below the cost of production. The producers in our region are therefore okay. unable to compete with the markets in the developed world as there is limited scope, or in most cases, it is infeasible to seek to offer matching subsidies given the state of the economies in our region. However, equally, this represents not a reason for lamentation, but what represents truly a call to action as a region must seek to move our agricultural production up the value chain with greater emphasis on processing and the attendant shift from being primary producers to, um, of course, going up to, to increase the value added. COVID-19, however, has exposed, has also exposed areas of fragility in our regional food systems to supply chain shocks, vulnerability to international price volatility, and import source supplies concentration. The three thematic areas or pillars of transformation for discussion today integrate seamlessly into an existing body of work being led by the CARICOM Secretariat. There is congruence with our common agricultural policy and our COVID-19 agri-food risk management framework and action plan to name but just two. The discourse on climate change and Caribbean food systems reinforces the urgency for implementation of the, of the emergency response strategy and action plan for agriculture as on such intervention that can benefit the region and build this climate change resiliency. We are cognizant of the regional government's socioeconomic constraints, um, which is manifested in terms of growing fiscal deficits, increasing debt to GDP ratios, protracted high unemployment, and unacceptable levels of poverty. 
funding and financing the new Caribbean food system cannot therefore be driven solely by public sources, but requires the inclusion of the private sector, development partners, and new lending modalities by multilateral agencies are also a critical aspect of this new strategic pivot. Already, the CARICOM Secretariat has inked an MOU with the CARICOM private sector organization and intends to support member states in fast tracking the legislative and policy reforms that are necessary to attract and catalyze investments from the private sector to support the regional food system transformation. A survey earlier this year conducted by the World Food Program, FAO and CARICOM indicated that approximately 2.7 million people in the region are food insecure. As a secretariat, achieving the sustainable development goal number two of zero hunger is embedded in our ongoing work program. A monitoring and evaluation framework for the regional food and nutrition um, security action plan has been developed and is being rolled out across several member states. Discussions on the benefits of using the parliamentary front, front against hunger as a vehicle to achieve SDG 2 are far advanced, along with the training and capacity building for member states in conducting the food insecurity experience scale survey. Now, as I conclude these opening remarks, I wish to leave a few additional general comments, though related as an initial deposit and to literally, I suppose, open the batting, as it were, for this regional dialogue. Drawing from a book um, that we launched a few weeks ago, titled The New Normal, a Post-COVID Primer for Business, the need for the strategic pivot of our business community, particularly the organization of our agricultural industry is critical. This will entail the launching of new business models, highlighting the role of digital transformation in a people-centric new normal. This is particularly germane as across the region, informality accounts for 40 to 60% of GDP, a significant amount of which emanates from the agri-food sector. That is why I'm buoyed by the fact that integrated into the three session topics, the discourse today may benefit with exchanges around digital transformation of the regional food systems, strategies to build our human capital to achieve greater subject matter specialists and capitalizing on emerging industries. With these few remarks, uh, to the Chair, it, uh, it warms my heart to be able to welcome all to this CARICOM Regional Dialogue as we prepare our united approach ahead of the United Nations Food System Summit. I therefore wish us all a productive and rich dialogue. Thank you very much.